acts of racism, be it on social media or physical heinous actions being perpetrated, such as the Middleburg Coffin incident. Uh, on Reconciliation Day, our next guest experienced uh, a racist act against his religion and his race. Uh, Mukhtar Dasani was attacked on a bus back from a year-end celebration in Michalisburg. He's in studio with us. And then in our Cape Town studio, we're joined by Stan Henkerman, the Executive Director of the Institute of Race Relations. Um, let me first say a very, very good morning to uh, Mukhtar. And thank you very much for joining us here on the program. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. And then in our Johannesburg studio. And uh, as I mentioned, we've also got Stan, who's in our Seapoint studio. Stan, thank you very much and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Lovely to be on this way. All right. Let's, let's begin with you, Mukhtar. What, what is your story? What actually happened? And when did this happen to you? Okay, basically, um, this all started with, uh, there was a lawyer from Heidelberg um, who basically invited us and said, listen, you either light the candle or you stay in the dark. Um, and in this initiative, he had arranged a train journey uh, on the 16th of December, being Reconciliation Day, um, to sort of celebrate the, how far we've come as a country and as a nation after 22 years of independence. And uh, with that initiative, obviously, my company, Universal Tissue, basically bought um, a whole cart. And we thought it was a good idea to, to obviously do this as a year in function as well. Yeah. Uh, and obviously have a, a nice diverse group with us um, on the train. And it was an excellent journey all the way through to Machalisburg. And uh, it was just unfortunate that uh, on the way back, in one of the last buses that took us from, from the, the, the resort that we were at, to back to the train station in Machalis, um, there was obviously a, a gentleman there that uh, was obviously under the influence of alcohol, um, who started obviously, you know, singing uh, some, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, De La Rey, etc., etc., yeah, yeah. uh, trying to antagonize us. Uh, obviously, in this bus, we had, uh, we had people from the mayor's office as well, of, uh, of Heidelberg, um, and I think he just tried to sort of <clears throat> get some sort of reaction. But we just left it. And then eventually he then moved on further, put uh, alcohol onto his uh, finger and started inserting it into uh, a, few of, a few of my employees who are also Muslim as well. Uh, obviously knowing that, that... They don't drink. That we don't yeah. drink and that we stay away from alcohol. It's against our religion. And um, we, I just sort of signaled for my, for, for, for my employees just to, to leave it, you know, don't respond to it. Uh, then again, he went to another one of my employees and rubbed it on his hair. I again told him, just ignore it, you know, just, just leave it. We don't, we don't want trouble, especially not, uh, not because we've had such a good day. Let's not spoil it, you know. He then proceeded to the front of the bus uh, while we were moving and, um, and then sort of uh, poured alcohol into our cooler box and uh, put his drink into, into our cooler box. We still left it. I just signaled for the guys. We were about 12 of us in the bus, from, 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 well, at least from our company. And um, I signaled for them to just leave it, you know, don't, don't respond. Eventually, he, he picked up a, a six-pack of, uh, of uh, soft drinks from our cooler box, opened it up and started distributing it to his family and friends. And that's when, I think for me, it was a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. After which I confronted him and I said, why, why are you doing this? This doesn't belong to you. Yeah. And I basically took it from him, put it back into the cooler box. And as I got up, he uh, headbutted me in my eye. Yeah. Uh, but this obviously made me unbalanced. And I sort of almost uh, fell out there because as we were driving, the bus's door was open. So I almost fell really out of the bus. bus. Fortunately, I managed to grab onto the rail and I you know, stayed in the bus. And by then, obviously, people had restrained him and whatever. So, uh, so yeah, so that was basically... That's the, the story the, and the, that's what on, happened. On, on what happened there. But the, the unfortunate part was that once we sort of uh, got off the bus and were getting his details, etc., he was quite confident that uh, the law is on his side and that he says, you can, you, here's my details, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Nothing will happen to me. Yeah. And I think that for me was sort of the, the striking That was point. the most worrying part is that most a guy definitely. like this realizes that he can get away with this, but can he? And that's, and that's where I'm going to bring Stan into the, into the conversation. Stan is a director from, he's executive director of the Institute of Race Relations. Stan, you heard, um, you've heard the story, and, 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 it's, and I don't imagine it's anything new, but the scary part is exactly um, what, what we heard, this guy, what Mukhtar was told, that go for it, do whatever, I think I'm within the law. I mean, Stan, what are the repercussions of behavior like this? 
Leanne, thank you very much. Can I just uh, correct you? Um, I'm the director of the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. Um, thank you for correcting but, us. We but do to come have back it wrong to the here. incident. Um, to come back to the incident, I think I think the the biggest uh, concern here is the fact that this man thinks that he um, he will not nothing will happen to him, and that goes back to to an assumption that he has of himself and and his standing in the world and 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 the, and what he thinks about other people, and. And, and perhaps, you know, in the area where he lives, uh, um, you know, he knows lo law enforcement people and so forth. But the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, doing something like that to somebody else um, is, is illegal, but it is also immoral. It is, it is against um, the very fundamentals of human relations. Yeah. And, and that is, for me, at the heart of the problem, that somebody can have this kind of attitude towards other people. Um, and so what, what we, we've heard him doing is, is, sim is simply just a manifestation of, a, of deeply held beliefs and assumptions about other people. Yeah. And, and I think the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to throw the book at him. The law must take its course. And, and if that doesn't happen, then you can imagine the lack of, of, of uh, or the problem of confidence that people will have in, in law enforcement. Yeah. But just the idea that this man thinks that nothing will happen to him is a problem. tells me that yeah. he believes that he is, he is different. He needs to be treated differently yeah. from other people. So let me, let me I'll just, just talk about what, you know, what, what happened thereafter, Mukhtar. Did you report it? Did you go to the police? <coughs> have you done anything since that incident? Uh, most definitely. In fact, yeah. uh, this, uh, we, we had obviously, once the train had reached Heidelberg, immediately we went to the police station, uh, after which we were told that uh, jurisdiction was a problem uh, but due to the fact that this crime t had taken place in Michalisburg. So we then, <coughs> the following day, <coughs> I managed to get the medical exam done, the J88. Uh, I then drove back to Michalisburg. Uh, to obviously open open this case because I, f I feel so strongly about yes, this and, and I feel so. and I feel that you know what uh, if 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 you just leave it and if you just you know let other things get in the way uh, my fear is that you know perhaps somebody someone else could possibly be attacked and maybe they might not be as lucky as I am to obviously yeah. still have but the case that you would have opened was assault right it was an assault okay, case yes so that's assault whereas at the end of the day I mean this is this is in a way blatant racism I mean Most he's definitely. going against your beliefs, your religion, your culture, and everything. So it's more than just assault. But when you go to a police station, that's the only charge you can take out. For sure. And I think, I think the biggest problem was, and I think what, what, what shocked me, uh, was the fact that uh, the poli initially the police officers said, okay, but what, what type of assault is it? So I said, what do you mean what type of assault? An assault yeah. is an assault. Uh, and then I found the difference that you have uh, GBH, which is grievous bodily harm, yeah. and common assault. And I felt, well, what is common assault? Do you just, does common assault uh, entail just going around slapping people commonly? Yeah. Is, that, is that a common assault? Mm. I mean, I would assume that a, an assault is an assault. And yeah. I mean, that's, I think, and more, more, to be honest with you, more than, more than the assault itself, I think uh, it's, 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 it's very sort of embarrassing and damaging to your image, yeah. especially in front, of, in, front of, uh, in front of all my employees and my family where I'm looked up to as a leader, yeah. as somebody with an authoritative, being authoritative sort of figure. And, uh, and yet, a lot of everybody told me, but why did you not respond? And I said, well, to be honest with you, if I responded, then how am I any better to him? You know? Absolutely. Enough. There has to be that distinction. Yeah. And if I feel that what he's done is wrong, and by me doing exactly the same thing, how am I any better, and how am I setting any example? So yes, initially, obviously, there was this... There was this what has happened <coughs> after that? So you, I mean, obviously, it's a very recent incident. I mean, we can still see your eyes, uh, your eye, and um, it's, it's, it's still something that's obviously affected not only you physically, but, you know, m mentally and, and psychologically. It's a big, it's an emotional, it's an emotional thing to happen. Have they contacted this man? Has has there been any further um, any further developments? Uh, well, basically, I had spoken to the investigating officer uh, yesterday, <coughs> and he informed me that uh, the man drove himself to Machalisburg, 
Um, and apparently he's obviously been charged with uh, with these charges. Yeah. And uh, there has been a court date set for early January okay. or mid-January. All right. So <coughs> this is where I'm, I'm going to bring um, Stan again. I'm just going to ask you to, to, to respond to something like this because we get incidents like this and then the only option is to go and and open up a case of assault. But then you get incidents that are happening online. I mean, recently I think it was a, 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 a case of uh, some guy named uh, Ben Sassenhoff, I'm not too sure, on social media. We, of course, all know about the Penny Sparrow incident and so many more like that that happened this year, which were devastating. And they, and they again, they're emotional, they are insulting, they are racist. And these comments are things that, that, that just get to people and it's absolutely unfortunate. But how do you go to the police station and lay a charge against them? You know, do we perhaps have a problem in our justice system when it comes to allowing these people to get away with what they're saying? Um, Leanne, I think that's why, um, you know, Parliament wants to strengthen the, the laws that, that, that deals with, with issues of hate crime and so forth. And I think that's important. I think that it must be outlawed and people must know that there are repercussions. But, you know, that, that just partially deals with the issue because the issue is much deeper than, than just the utterance. It is much deeper than just throwing the book at them. The fact that Penny Sparrow had been fined so much money, you know, something like 150,000 rand, which she says she doesn't have, yeah. does that make Penny Sparrow less of a racist? I'm not sure about that. And so together with law enforcement, together with, 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 the, with um, the judiciary taking its, it, its rightful place and doing what need, it needs to do, we also need to educate each other. You know, we are 22 years into this democracy, you know, and what we see is just a rehashing of old stereotypes, you know, of, of deeply held beliefs about and attitudes about other people, which are untested, which are untrue, and, and, and you know, and I think we need to start challenging each other. Yeah. You know, and where it starts, it, it, it doesn't help me shouting at a white person. Because, because, you know, um, it, it's just another verbal brawl. What needs to happen is that we need to start within our own groups. And we need to start calling each other out. You know, and if, 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 if white people start challenging other white people about these racist incidents, about these attitudes, that is a good start. Yeah, because we need to start co-creating this new South Africa. Yeah. You cannot have... A, a country where we live on parallel universes and we have <coughs> very different approaches to how we see each other. Yeah. And I think it's important that we, we do start calling each other out within our own groups yeah. because that is more powerful than, um, you know, me shouting at somebody who is not um, from my particular uh, grouping whatever that I, grouping might I be. I absolutely agree with you, Stan, and that's that's one way of rectifying the situation uh, within ourselves because we can ask the justice system to do so much, but at the end of the day, if it's still within you, it's still going to carry on. Stan, I thank you very much for joining us. I wish we had more time. Stan Henkerman, um, I'm just going to again say, uh, Executive Director is at the Institute for uh, Justice and Reconciliation. Is that the Institute? That's correct. Thank you that's very correct. much for correcting us, and thank you so much for being You're with welcome. us here on the program. And Mukta, thank you for sharing your story because you're not alone in this. This is something that so many people are going through. But at the end of the day, I think by highlighting it, um, you're bringing out, you're showing people and perhaps somebody at home is listening and thinking, man, you know, I've, I've done something like this and it's wrong. It's, it's, sure. it's wrong. And the right thing is to speak out and make, make people aware of, of how wrong it actually is. We wish you the best of luck. We'll stay in touch with you and find out what, what actually comes of this case. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Uh, Mukta Dasani, a, a, a victim of, a, let's call it a racist act. Let's call it any act you want to. I find it difficult to put a name to the aggression that some people have inside of them and uh, what they feel is better to belittle other people to make themselves feel good. I'm not understanding it. But yeah, that's unfortunately how things are. Uh, let's take a break here on the program. We're going to tackle another issue, a very serious issue that unfortunately at this time of the year seems to just get worse. And that's the rate of suicide and depression. Stay tuned.